chapter number two, the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good news of the two souls that were saved over at the jail. Lord, we're glad you're still in the saving business. Lord, if you still wasn't seeking to save that which was lost, you'd already taken us home. But God, you've left your church here to do a mission, and that mission is to take the gospel to every creature. And God, I pray that, Lord, we'd see more saved in the days to come. Lord, if there's anybody here today unsaved, I pray that today is the day of their salvation. I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd bind the powers of hell. And I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts. Lord, I realize that this time of year there's the hustle and bustle, the traveling from here to there. And God, we get so preoccupied with Christmas, we forget what Christmas is all about. So, Father, I pray today you'd warm our hearts toward the things of God. And I pray you'd do what only you can do. You would do a work in our midst this morning. For you said, for without you we can do nothing. So, Father, I pray you'd bless, I pray you'd speak to hearts, and I pray you'd glorify your namesake. Have your will and way, use this unworthy vessel, and be with those that could not be here this morning because of sickness, uh, those that are providentially hindered, uh, those that are here today, I pray they'd see Jesus high and lifted up. And Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things from the text. I know this is very familiar. You've heard it all your life. You even saw it on Charlie Brown. Mm, but you don't see it on Charlie Brown anymore unless you stream it. Uh, aren't you sick of the woke crowd? It's amazing. The, mo the more they try to squash it out, the more people stream it and watch it. Mm, uh, but anyway, I don't want to get on all that this morning. I want you to notice a few things about the text. And by the way, if people just read the text, they'd find out some things. They'd find out that Mary was a, a virgin. She was espoused to Joseph. They hadn't been together yet. Uh, we find she was a virgin. If you read the text, you'd find that she brought forth her firstborn son. Didn't say her only son. Mary had children after the Lord Jesus. The only problem was he was the only miraculous birth. Hmm? Uh, but notice, if you will, that the birth of Jesus Christ was unassuming. Look again in verse number 1. You find it came to pass in those days. Uh, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made uh, when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. We find the world wasn't looking for Jesus. Uh, they were setting forth their affairs. Uh, governments were governing. Uh, people were being uh, 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 responsible citizens to the, the government's demands. We find that there was a taxing going on and people were paying their taxes. Uh, Miss B. 
Billy was uh, being uh, used back then. Uh, anyway, don't tell her I said that, all right? Uh, but look, if you will, verse number 8. Uh, the Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Uh, again, shepherds were shepherding. Uh, carpenters were carpeting. Uh, folks were doing what they naturally did uh, on a regular and a daily basis. Uh, Nobody was looking for Jesus to come. Uh, it was an unassuming time. Uh, uh, can I say that in the day we live in? Uh, folks are doing what folks do, uh, but very few are looking for the Lord Jesus to come. Uh, he is coming again. Uh, 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 he's coming uh, the same way he went from the sky. Uh, and can I say the next prophetic event, uh, he's going to take his church out of here. What a blessing. Uh, seven years later, he's going to literally come back to this earth uh, and you and I that are saved will come back with him uh, and he'll set up his kingdom and rule and reign from the throne of Jerusalem for a thousand years uh, but folks aren't looking for Jesus to come they weren't looking for him the first time they're not looking for him now can I say a lot of people that say they're saved aren't looking for him say how do you know that because if they's looking for him we'd have to put out folding chairs today can you imagine if the Lord Jesus let us know he's coming back this Tuesday? Hmm? I don't think we'd be singing holly jolly Christmas. I think we'd be on our face getting right with God and we'd be begging God to win our friends and loved ones. We'd be telling folks far and wide Jesus is coming and he's coming soon. Well, I got news for you. He could come before Tuesday. We see his birth was unassuming. Can I say that Jesus was born not to be a king, but a carpenter? He was born not in robes, but in rags. Can I say he was born not into gold, but hay? He was born not in renown, but obscurity. Can I say he was born not in splendor, but in meekness? He was born not to live, but to die. The first time he came, he came as Savior. The next time he comes, he's coming as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And the birth of Christ was unassuming. And can I say the birth of Christ was unnatural? Again, in verses 4 through 7, we find that they traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Mary's a spouse to Joseph. She's great with child. Uh, and uh, uh, can I say that uh, she is going to be delivered once they get to Bethlehem? Now, all this is in the plan of God. Brother Jeff, as you study the scriptures, uh, you'll find that uh, uh, we find in Micah that he'd be born in Bethlehem, Ephetath. Uh, we find in Isaiah that he'd be born of a virgin. We find that uh, 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 in order for Jesus to be really the Son of God, the darling Savior we claim for him to be, he had to fulfill the scriptures. Uh, he didn't come to do away with the Word of God. He came to fulfill it uh, and then to give us the New Testament uh, to give us a more excellent way. Uh, uh, we no longer have to keep the law. He kept the law. Uh, now we have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. What a blessing that we have grace and not the law because He came full of grace and truth. Uh, but His birth was unnatural. It wasn't natural for a virgin to give birth. Mm. Can I say it wasn't natural for all those courses of events to happen, but that's what happened in order for him to prove that he was who he said he was. Huh? We see his birth was unassuming. It was unnatural, but can I say it was uncanny? Look with me, if you will, in verse number 9 again. The Bible says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the shepherds, and the glory uh, of the Lord shone round, round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men that was uncanny can I say that when you was born uh, God did not send the heavenly host to open up the sky and sing glory to God 
when you was born. Now, I think I did hear some singing when my granddaughter was born, but other than that, I don't think I've heard anything out of heaven. But isn't it amazing that when Jesus was born, even heaven celebrated it? Hmm? Uh, it was uncanny. I mean, the darling Son of God left glory and came here, but he couldn't leave glory up there. That glory had to be announced around here. And with that thought, I'm interested in verse 14 where it says, Glory to God in the highest. With God's help, I want to preach on glory to God in the highest. Now, I want to show you something. Look in verse 14. Notice the word glory. It's capitalized. Notice in verse number 9, it says, And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Can I say when the glory was shining round about the shepherds because of the angel's announcement, it wasn't capitalized. But when the glory was about giving God the glory, all of a sudden it's capitalized. There's a great emphasis now on the glory of of God. And with that thought, I want to preach on that. Glory to God in the highest. Now, can I say you've got to understand what glory means? And the reason it is capitalized, and the reason it says glory to God, you have to understand what they are saying is that God deserves respect. Mm -hmm. Glory means respect or to give Him honor. Can I say we'd have revival in this world if just God's churches would respect Him? Now, I didn't say if churches respected Him. There's a lot of places that call themselves church, but they do not belong to the Lord. I'm talking about His churches. Now, what's a sad commentary is that a lot of people will leave true churches, uh, and a lot of people will leave false churches, uh, and they have the same expression on their faces. You know why? Because we didn't respect God while we were here. See, a lot of people come to ease their conscience towards God, saying, well, I was in church, God, now you've got to bless me. Yeah. He don't have to bless you. He don't have to bless me. Right. And by the way, Miss Marcy, the only reason He does bless us is not contingent on what we do for Him. Right. He blesses us because He chooses to love us and chooses to bless us. Amen. I don't know why, but I'm sure glad He does. But glory means to respect Him. How do we respect? How do we give honor to God? Well, we do it with compassion. Uh, when was the last time you showed compassion towards God? Now, we want His compassion toward us, do we not? When was the last time we showed Him that we loved Him? Hmm? Respect and giving honor to Him not only means to do it with compassion, but also compliance. When was the last time we say, Lord, I'm coming to your house because I want to hear the word of God so I know better how to obey you? The old hymn writer said it best. I say this all the time, but I can't find any better way to say it than this. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. When we are obedient to what God says... Uh, my dear friends, it respects Him. It gives honor to Him. My three children are here. They will tell you when they was little, if they did not show their mama respect, they had to deal with their daddy. They will tell you as adults, if they do not show their mama respect, they will have to deal with their daddy. Hmm? Uh, we didn't have a whole lot when they were growing up, but one thing that we did have, we did have the fact they better respect their mama. Hmm? Their mama had sacrificed a whole lot for them to have what they had. And they better respect their mama. Hmm? Can I say, you and I show the Lord we love Him and show the Lord that we want to be obedient to Him. We show Him respect. Hmm? Now, contrary to what Christian would tell you, I did not beat that boy every day. He may have deserved it, but so did you. <laughs> but 
But I didn't have to beat him every day. Because I beat him enough. That he figured it out real good and real quick. Huh? Now when I say beat, unlike you, I used that little spot on the backside. I'll never forget, yours were little. You'd bring them to church, sit on the front row, and Zachary get to acting up. And without missing a beat, you wouldn't even bat an eye. You'd reach off and backhand that, that boy, and his head would be bouncing around like a bobblehead. And then next week, same thing, and I'm thinking, boy, you've got to learn. She's going to beat you to death. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, children are different. All I had to let Jordan know is that we were disappointed in him. I'd break his heart. Him, I did have to beat the devil out of. I still haven't figured out how to get over her hard-headedness, so I would just look at Mama and say, you got to deal with her because she's too much like me. Uh, but what I'm saying is they learned obedience is a whole lot better than disobedience. And when we learn to truly be obedient to the Lord, we show Him respect. Now, don't go out of here saying, Brother Doug believes you ought to kill your children. I don't believe that. I believe you ought to love them. I believe you ought to talk to them. I believe you ought to teach them. Now, I believe when they step out of line, you ought to show them some grace. But when they keep jumping across that line, there's a good way to teach them respect. The Bible says, spare the, the rod, you'll spoil the child. And listen... If you discipline your children properly, you won't have to discipline them often. Hmm? Uh, but if you don't discipline them at all, they're going to break your heart. Hmm? You know why all three of mine are in church today? They're all grown. Why they're in church today? Because they learned something important about God when they was little. And they learned something about obedience, and they learned something about respect, and they're here today. It's a blessing. Hmm? Well, I don't know where all that came from, but it didn't cost you anything extra. But I will promise you this. If you don't discipline them, if you leave them to their own nature, they will break your heart. God don't leave us to our own nature because we'll disappoint God. We'll make a mockery of the things of God. Listen, the Bible makes it clear that if you're without chastisement, you're a bastard, not a son. God does not, does not discipline the devil's children. But he will show us grace. He is long-suffering to us, word. But friend, if we will not be obedient, he does know how to get our attention. We show the Lord glory when we respect Him. We respect Him with compassion, when we show compassion towards Him, when we show compliance with Him, when we show continuation, when we're faithful. Mm -hmm. the Christian life is not to be a yo-yo we're not to be in and out up and down all around we're to grow in grace and nurture and admonition of the Lord we're to be faithful God has made us stewards of his word stewards of the great commission stewards of his church stewards of the things he has blessed us and prospered us with uh, and moreover in stewards it's uh, that a man should be found Faithful, faithful. I don't know where it got in the mindset of people that I'm saved and that's all that matters. Not to Jesus. We've been bought with a price. Huh? Can I say? If the first church had the mentality of this, this age of churches, there'd never been a second church. Not a second generation. Because people today have embraced the ideology of Satan. My right to my claim to myself. That's the essence of sin. If we're going to give glory to God in the highest, we must do it with honor, with respect. Glory means to respect Him. Glory to God in the highest, bringing glory to God also means to do it with refrain. That word refrain is a musical term. That means to sing a chorus over and over and over, to repeat the refrain. How many times, Miss Marcy, well, let me ask you this, Miss Marcy, since you're sitting there, I'm going to pick on you. I'm not going to ask your age, but I'm going to ask you, how long have you been saved? 
37 years. You didn't have any gray hair? No, okay. Now let me ask you this. 37 years, how many times have you heard Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound? Thousands. You ever got tired of it? No. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Never got tired of those songs that glorify God but minister to our souls. Do you think God's got tired of hearing us sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound? Do you think God's got tired of hearing us sing uh, What a Day That Will Be? Do you think God has ever got tired of hearing us sing uh, 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 about the fountain filled with blood or that I know my name is there? No, it's a sweet-smelling savor when we praise the Lord. Uh, hey, it's something that brings honor to God. So much that he told Israel that he inhabited the praises of Israel. Uh, in other words, if Israel praised him in tune, uh, he would come and sit down amongst them when, he was, when they were praising him. Well, glory to God in the highest is, means to do it with refrain. It means to praise him repeatedly. Colonel, how you doing today? Good to see you. If God was only interested in our worship once, that means the Sunday after you got saved, you don't have to come to church once. Why do we got to keep coming back? Why do we got to come back Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Right. Revival times? other special meeting times why is it important well I'm talking to the right person right now I just don't eat once a day do you why don't you just eat once a week if you only ate once a week Brittany's cooking would taste good you know what I'm saying huh you agreed to that no. you are a brave man uh, oh, she's a better cook than I remembered. We was over there the other night. I thought, wow, did she cater this? What's the deal? <laughs> that was good. It was. I enjoyed it. I, I, every, even her stuff was good. <laughs> and I typically don't eat that stuff. Stuff that comes out of buffaloes, I don't eat. <laughs> Is that some kind of buffalo dip? I'm thinking of what cow chips are, and I'm thinking, I don't want that. But it was good. Huh? Well, how come we only eat once a week or don't eat once a week? Because we need more than that for life to sustain us. Well, we're to worship more than once a week because we need it. Uh, because our flesh isn't saved and our flesh is rotten. You leave your flesh unchecked, you'll be living like you lived before you got saved. But uh, I'm glad I got a new man. But that new man, uh, 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 he needs to be satisfied. And can I say, though, the, the, uh, uh, the nature you feed the most will be the strongest. Uh, and we need to feed that new man every day. We need to read the Bible and pray and seek the Lord and have a song in our heart. Uh, but there's something about corporate worship uh, where we come together uh, and we worship together uh, and we sing songs of praise unto our Savior together. Uh, it sustains us. Uh, listen, uh, Sunday helps me get to Wednesday, uh, and Wednesday helps me get to Sunday, uh, and week after week helps me get to the next revival meeting because uh, I need it. Uh, hey, I need more of him and less of me. Uh, but can I say God doesn't need us, but he chose to make man to bring glory to him and Something about God, He likes our worship. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. And so therefore, we're to glory Him, glorify Him, bring glory to Him through refrain, through repeated praise. We want to praise Him when we're outside of church and praise Him when we're in church because He's worthy of our praise. We see bringing glory to God means... To respect him means to have refrain. It also means to regard him. Hmm? Listen, I love all of you. 
But I regard that lady right there higher than all of you. Hmm. She's my darling person. Uh, soon to be 35 years she's put up with me. Now, some of you just tolerate me on Sundays, but you don't put up with me. She puts up with me. Huh? Huh? You know why you don't put up with me? Because she's the only one who can. Huh? I'm just trying to help you. I know that. I'm not putting off. I know that. I believe God made her just for me because nobody else put up with me. Huh? But uh, listen. I have regard for her above any other here on earth because of what God did in my life when he gave me her. We became one flesh. And as a product of that, he gave me them. And as a product of them and me not killing him, I now have that. Huh? I regard the Lord even more than I regard her. Because he's the one that puts breath in my body. He's the one that saved my never dying soul. He's the one that daily loadeth me with benefits. So how am I to show him that I regard him above all others by conveying my appreciation? We heard a lot of that in this last revival meeting about giving thanks to God and praising the Lord. We're to convey that to him. Let me pick on somebody else. Everybody's ducking. <laughs> Brother Peter, shouldn't have sat there, bro. How long y'all been married? It's not a trick question. 24 years. What a blessing. Soon to be 25. What a blessing. The day she said, I do, back to you. You told her you loved her. Is that the only time you told her you loved her? Hmm? It'd be a real cold marriage. Huh? It'd be like Tina. She, she's not sitting next to Josh today, huh? Huh? She's working. No, you got to tell her repeatedly you love her, that you appreciate her. Hmm? Huh? Because if you don't keep the honey pot warm, you're going to end up like Donald. He's by himself, and his wife is here. <laughs> huh? It wasn't that funny, Chloe. I can hear her laughing behind my back. Can I say we are to show the Lord our regard by conveying to Him our appreciation, Amen. our thankfulness, our love? Where would we be without the Lord? We'd be in hell most likely. But where would we be without him after we got saved? We'd be in a mess. We ought to show him our appreciation. We ought to show him our admiration. When's the last time you just looked at the Lord and said, Wow. I do that all the time. I told you all not long ago, I was sitting in Jacksonville, Florida in church, and I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, how did I get here? Who am I? And I'm sitting in St. Lucia getting ready to preach. I'm saying, Lord, how did I get here? Who am I? And all the places the Lord has expanded my coast. I don't know how I get there and why God ever has been so good to me. And I just stand back and say, wow, you're a great God. When was the last time you just admired him and his handiwork? When was the last time you just pulled over and looked at a sunset and said, wow. God did that and he didn't even have to blink to do it. Hmm? You ought to convey that to him every now and then. Huh? My wife made some Buckeyes the other night. They were so good. I mean, everything she makes, if she puts her hands on it, it's good. Unlike Brittany. But it, my wife, everything she makes is good. I hadn't thought about that, but Glendale and Dougie may need to bring some of this out. But she made these Buckeyes the other night. That was the best she ever, I mean, they were like cotton candy. Just, whoo, they were gone. I mean, just, they were good. They were so good, I ate about, I don't, I ain't going to tell you how many, but they were good. Huh? And then she made your cookies last night, and man, they were good. Last night I brought few of them upstairs she said how many of them have you eaten and then she says 
Well, come Monday, we've got to start working out so we can be ready for vacation. And I'm thinking, ain't no we in all that. <laughs> Just keep making the cookie things. She makes her own homemade from scratch chocolate chip cookies and somewhere in the midst of all that she sticks a miniature Reese cup in the middle of them they're the next best thing to dine and going to heaven and she expects me to eat one I'm saying I wonder if she'd make them cookies if I didn't tell her they were good huh huh they had cookie fest the other day Taya, Sydney, and Nett was in the kitchen, cookies and something called cake pops and all this stuff, and they think I'm not going to sample everything? I do have Alt with my daughter-in-law. You decorate cookies beautifully, but that big thing you put on the Christmas trees is not meant to eat. I broke three teeth trying to eat that thing. I thought they outlawed jawbreakers. They're not supposed to be on Christmas tree cookies. Don't get me wrong, Red. I got her down. Well, this was something. If you don't show appreciation, you think anybody's going to do anything for you? Well, don't you think by showing the Lord appreciation, he'll do more for you? Ten lepers were cleansed. One came back and gave glory to God. Which one do you think the Lord favored more? Hmm? Uh, can I say this it also means to convey our attention to him how much attention do you give the Lord now, there have been times in our married life when the kids were little and they all played ball and they all did something they was running every which way and everything she'd have some one way I'd have some another way my in-laws would have one another, one another way we'd just go on it and every now and then we'd see each other Oh, when I'd say, do I know you? Because we didn't spend any time with one another. We were just running all the time. Hmm? Some of you, some of y'all, the Vinings know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Huh? Uh, Jeff Penny know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You run, you run, you're here, you're there, you're there, and every now and then in a while you see one another. But see, something about getting old and your kids grown, we get to spend a whole lot of time together now. Huh? Can I say it's a lot better when you pay attention to one another and you give your attention to one another? Hmm? Can I say sometimes we get so busy we don't take time to give proper attention to the Lord? Amen. Bringing glory to God means to regard Him even above our busyness and make certain we give Him attention because He has a lot of wonderful things for our lives. Can I say this? Bringing glory means... To show him renowned. He is to be distinguished above all others. Yeah. Bringing glory to God means to reverence him. Amen. How do we reverence him? By extolling him. That's a big word for cheering him. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? Now, I've never been to Rupp Arena. I told Brother, Brother Derek that here a couple weeks ago and he was shocked. This is going to shock you too, Brother Derek. Might as well pick on you. You're sitting over there doing nothing. My mother's roots are from Kentucky. My father's roots are from Kentucky. I was born in Ohio. Okay, so there's the drop. Yeah. Okay, right there. Huh? So I've never been to Rupp Arena. Now, I have been to the shoe. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. All right. Don't worry about it. I told him I'd never been to Rupp Arena. But if I went to Rupp Arena, I'm sure there's people down there dressed out in blue. That every time Big Blue makes a bucket, they go berserk. Hmm? Last week, as the Bengals was putting it on the Colts and it was freezing cold and you was out there looking like whatever you was looking like, mm -hmm. when they scored a touchdown, you didn't sit on your hands thinking, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> no, no, uh-uh. No, you're crazy without all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You was jumping for joy. When was the last time you cheered on our Savior? When was the last time you said, Glory to God, there's nobody like Him? When was the last time you said, Wow, what a Savior, hallelujah? 
You say, well, we're supposed to be reverent in church. Says who? Yeah, amen. Everything's to be done decent and in order. But there's nothing wrong about being excited about being saved and being excited about what Jesus did conquering death, hell, and the grave. We're to reverence Him and in doing so, we're to extol Him. We're to cheer Him. It also means we're to exalt Him. We're to lift Him up. He said, I, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Right. We're also to exclaim Him. We're to tell others about how wonderful He is. In so doing, we reverence Him. Hmm? How come it's okay to brag on our grandchildren, but we can't brag on the Lord? Don't get, me, don't get me wrong, I brag on that little booger right over there all the time, but I've been bragging on Jesus for 49 years. And I'll brag on him till I get to go home to heaven. We see it says glory to God, but it didn't stop there. It said in the highest. Now what does that mean? That means in the highest manner. The highest possible means on earth and in heaven, he needs to be gloried. Hmm? He needs to be glorified. The highest means possible. We ought to glorify Him. How come we have no problems making monuments and everything to everybody else, but we won't even glorify God? Hmm? It not only means in the highest manner, but it also means in the highest majesty, with the highest splendor and highest grandeur. He ought to be glorified. But it also means in the highest mindset. Our mode of thinking ought to be, am I bringing glory to God? Our mental disposition ought to be, today I'm going to bring glory to God. Amen. Can I say that in our very frame of mind, we ought to have this mentality, I'm going to bring glory to God. Now, Brother Greg Phillips says, if it embarrasses us, it glorifies God. Right. And we was talking in, in my Sunday school class, and I, 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 this is why we don't glorify God. We're afraid of what people will think of us. Sure. Did you see the sport coat I'm wearing today? Do you think I really care what people think of me? <laughs> Thank you. I thought it looked nice, so I bought it. If it was ugly, I wouldn't have bought it. But why are we so conscientious of what people think about us, but we're not conscientious of the thought that if we don't glorify God, they may die and go to hell? I sure would rather them be uncomfortable around me by glorifying God than to say nothing and them end up at the white, a great white throne judgment and me be uncomfortable watching them be sentenced to hell. Yeah. One man wrote this. He said, The crib of Christ brought God to man. The cross of Christ brings man to God. Now let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you glorified God to the highest? I didn't say. Praise the Lord. Glory. I've seen people do that. People being excited and praising God and somebody go. Ooh, knock yourself out. And I know we're all made different. We're all wired different. Thank the Lord we're not all wired like Dr. Phil. And I know that in this flesh dwells no good thing. I know some have more quiet dispositions. I know some, let's just say, might be backwards. And then there are some who are all out in your face. And can I say, I am one who does not like being around type A personalities. Type A personality is one of these people that they are nose to nose with you and they talk and they do not appreciate your personal space and all that and all the while they're talking and they don't think anybody else should have an opinion. It's all, 
And those people make me uncomfortable. I don't like being around those. Now I understand that. But can I say, can we learn to do what Paul said when he said, work out your own salvation? He's not saying work to be saved because we, we're not, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God and not of works lest any man should boast. We do not work to be saved, but because I am saved, that which God has put in me, I need to learn to work out and let it come to the forefront, which may mean that I might become a little bit uncomfortable in my flesh, but it's still okay to say, I just want to praise the Lord. He's been good to me. It's still okay to say, I'm glad I'm saved. It's still okay to put a gospel track down when you leave a tip on a, on a meal. It's still okay when you go through a drive through hand somebody a, a Christmas track and tell them Merry Christmas. It's still okay uh, uh, in the congregation of the saints to say, Amen, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's okay. And it might do you some good. This time of year, the world has to take note that something happened. You know, people decorate their houses and people light up the streets and people do all kinds of things. But are those things glorifying man or glorifying God? Amen. You can do those things and glorify God in doing them. But is that why we do them? And do our neighbors know why we're doing what we do? Do our coworkers know? Do our classmates know? Do our fellow church members know that we really love Jesus? If an angel who was not bought by the blood of Jesus Christ can stand and say, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men, don't you think those that have been bought by the blood of Christ can somewhere, somehow, in some way, find a way to say, Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm saved. Let me ask you again, are you glorifying God in your life? If not, you should, because he's worth it, and he's done so much for you. If you're here today and you're not saved, nothing you can do will bring glory to God until you get saved. And tonight, today would be a good day for you to get saved. Say, preacher, I don't know how to get saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We'll invite you to come. You come, we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today and know why Jesus really came. And you can have your sins washed away, and you can be saved by the good grace of God. But if you're saved, we're without excuse not to glorify the Lord. Amen. When's the last time you really glorify Jesus? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll come get a song of invitation while he's coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We're so thankful for the fact you came. We're thankful that you fulfilled the scriptures and lived a sinless, perfect life because you was the darling son of God. You was all man, but you was all God. And you went to Calvary. You paid our sin debt by shedding your blood to become our propitiation, our mercy seat. God, you was buried, and three days later, just like you said, you rose again, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. You were seen among some 500 witnesses, and you ascended back on high where you've been seated next to the right hand of the Father, Lord, where he has put everything under your feet, your Lord of lords and King of kings. And Lord, you're soon returning for your church. And Lord, we're thankful we know all those things. But Lord, help us to glorify you by letting others know how wonderful you really are. Thank you for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, your wonderful grace. Lord, help us to know you more than just a Christmas carol or a good hymn. Help us, Lord, to know you and the power of your resurrection. And help us, Lord, to convey it to others. Lord, I certainly pray if there's anybody amongst us unsaved that today would be the day of their salvation. Bless now, speak to hearts, have your way, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn away. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.